Um, I have some stuff on the screen. I'm not going to talk about it immediately, but down in the corner here, I'm going to describe what uh, these iterative methods I'm talking about. So the first one is newton Raphson. Uh, I, I think I was calling it Rapson before. There's actually an a, a PH instead of just a P, so it's an F noise. Um, but I'm going to say NR just for space reasons. So newton Raphson is actually uh, a very fast uh, iterative method. And so what an iterative method is, is it's essentially uh, something you can program into your computer to approximate a value very quickly. And these are, um, these are very useful tools when it comes to um, things like reducing error in approximations because what happens is every time a computer um, adds, subtracts, divides, or does anything, it uh, uh, propagates a little bit of error along with those transactions per se. So um, what, what these iterative methods do is they constantly get closer and closer and closer to the answer, assuming that they converge. And then uh, the reason that that's nice is because even though there is error every time, they're getting closer and closer and closer so that error approaches uh, a very small number. So um, obviously you can't get to the exact answer this way, but you can get pretty close and you'll get enough significant figures that um, for whatever you're doing, you'd be satisfied. So newton Rapson essentially what it does is it, it looks, um, I think I described it in a previous stream. I'll, I'll try and link that. Um, but it, essentially, uh, what it's used for is finding zeros of a function. So if you have, let's say, a parabola that went down, kisses the x-axis, and so this is the x-axis, and this is the y-axis, and so we're saying that that touches here. And um, we want to find this uh, numerically with with a computer. So what we would do is, so the newton raphson formula is um, a way of improving upon a guess. And the way it does this is by the algorithm xi plus 1 is equal to xi minus the value of the function at xi over the first derivative of that uh, function at xi. And so essentially what this is doing, because that may seem a little bit vague, is let's say we guessed uh, a point here. What this algorithm is doing is it's essentially setting up a tangent line. So I'm going to get a different color here. We'll get some red. And it's, it's looking at the slope of this, this line right here. And so this goes off in both directions. And so what this does is it goes and it looks at the slope and then it finds where that tangent line hits the x-axis. And where that tangent line hits the x-axis, it um, then picks that x as the new guess. So this would go up to the line. This is our second guess. Now this is a much steeper slope. Uh, I'm just going to get orange because we're getting a little closer. And so you can imagine a tangent line like that. And then um, we have a second uh, point where it hits the x-axis. So I don't know, I'm going to go light blue. That's probably not going to be very visible. Um, so we go up to where that is on the function and keep doing that. And what this does is it slowly gets closer and closer and closer to that zero. Um, now, there are situations where it can get stuck in loops. And there are situations where the, the, the algorithm itself just doesn't converge. So um, the reason that this is very nice in computers is because it converges quadratically, which means it, it, it converges extremely fast. Most things converge linearly. In, in this case, um, well, so if you were just taking the bisector between two points, seeing if it's positive or negative, and then moving in the direction and taking another bisector of that smaller point, that would converge linearly. But this this algorithm converges extremely fast. And so um, we'll get to how fast that is in a bit. Um, but I want to explain to you one more algorithm. So I'm going to uh, kind of clear up some stuff here and just get some rectangles and cover up everything. Okay. So 
Um, so also, if you're watching and you notice anything that I've mentioned that you disagree with, or if you notice something I'm not mentioning, please post that in the chat. Um, I'm just trying to do a quick summary of these iterative methods. So another iterative method is the steepest descent method. And so steepest descent is a similar method to newton Rapson, um in, in form of algorithm, but it's, it's somewhat different. So what we're doing is it's actually x i plus one equals x i minus some delta x times your derivative. So that would be, I guess that doesn't really matter if it's x i, and then x i f prime. Okay. So this is the algorithm for steepest descent. So what it's essentially doing is it's checking what the slope is at that point. It's um, <clears throat> it's making it's going in the opposite direction. So what this is essentially in terms of a multi-dimensional system is that it's this is the gradient. So it's going in the opposite of the gradient. The gradient is essentially like if you had a terrain that had a mountain, then in your here, obviously the steepest way the, the steepest direction would be straight up the mountain um, so steepest descent means that we're going as fast as we can down the mountain um, so if we have uh, a point like this and we have our parabola again and we pick our guess out here what this is doing is it's looking at the uh, the slope and it's going, so it's looking where the slope goes up and going a tiny step in the opposite direction. So we're going to keep working our way down here, delta x by delta x. And eventually, we're going to get pretty close. Um, and so you could miss this by a little bit, bounce back. But you want to set your, uh, your delta x based off of how willing you are to pass it by a little bit. Um, so... This method also is very viable, but you will notice it, it takes a lot more steps to actually get there, depending on your delta x. But obviously, if you pick a large delta x, there's a higher chance that you'll miss your answer. Um, so there's some things to mess around with this. But the, the cool thing about steepest descent is it's very, uh, it's, it's pretty um, consistent in its getting to an answer. Now, there are some problems. So let's say we had a different function that I'm going to draw in maroon that has the same answer. That's probably not standing out too much. But then it has a, a second divot right here. Well, if you get to this point, then um, it will. if it takes one step in this direction, then it will want to go back down into the hole. And if it takes a step into this direction, it will want go, to go back down into this hole. So it will never find the true answer. And so this is a problem. But what a lot of people do is they'll use steepest descent to get to an, a guess that will be able to uh, be plugged into newton rapson And then newton rapson will get there, get to the actual answer immediately. So newton rapson will just jump there in a couple steps. Um, so that's essentially a, a quick summary of iterative methods.